side. Happy Cow. Hi, I'm Juliana Hever, and you're watching me on Happy Cow. Hi, my name is Ken Spector with Happy Cow, and I'm here today with Juliana Hever. She's the plant-based dietitian. She's written a couple books, and we're going to talk to her today about the vegan lifestyle and vegan nutrition. So, hey, Juliana, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, Ken. So can you tell me a little bit about your background in nutrition? Yes, I started in the health and fitness industry almost 20 years ago. Yes, I started when I was five. Wow. <laughs> no, okay. um, but I I started as a personal trainer, and I went to you know I realized that everyone was asking me nutrition questions, and I wanted to know what I was saying mm -hmm. before you know just throwing out information. So mm -hmm. I went back to graduate school, became a registered dietitian, and then put all of my previous information on plant-based nutrition and veganism, vegetarianism, all together. And mm -hmm. then after that, like miracles started happening with my clients. Terrific. Let's just trace a typical day of Juliana. So you wake up in the morning. What do you do? I mean, you do a lot of different things, maybe as far as yoga, as far as meditation, as far as diet. What do you do in the morning? What did you do this morning? Well, I have little kids, so my schedule has changed dramatically since I had my kids. But typically, I drop off first. I wake up, I have my tea, I you know do my work stuff, and then what I, type of tea? Oh, I like vanilla black tea in the first thing in the morning with some soy milk. That's my favorite. Okay. And later, I'll end up with some green tea and stuff like that. But then you know I'll have get my kids ready to go and then usually I'll drop them off at school and then I go to my workout and I do different types of workouts um, during the week I like to go either do cardio at the gym or go for a run or I do classes or like I do a spinning class on Sunday uh, it just depends on the day but I try to get a workout in every day otherwise I kind of go crazy okay. try to have to tap my energy down and uh, and then you know eat my healthy food throughout the day pick up kids see clients work on articles interviews I'm mm -hmm. always doing something different completely different day every Day. Let's start with breakfast. What do you eat for breakfast? My favorite breakfast is a green smoothie. Mm -hmm. I love packing in the kale and frozen a little bit of frozen fruit and some almond milk, and that's my favorite go-to breakfast. And they're mm -hmm. great for on the go. Mm -hmm. I like to take, taking them on the go. And that's all you eat is one smoothie for breakfast? Yeah, I make them pretty hearty and pretty okay. huge, and they last. Like they're really filling for me. Okay. Yeah. Sometimes I'll do a juice, and that doesn't last quite as long. So mm -hmm. then I have to eat lunch a little earlier. I kind of just listen to my body and okay. eat when I'm hungry. And then lunch. What do you have for lunch on a typical day? Like today? Today, what are you going to have for lunch? Okay, my favorite lunch is a huge salad with whatever leftovers I have. So I'll do like, today I'll have a big huge salad with lots of beans and I made a um, oil-free dressing last night, my favorite maple mustard dressing and it's like a tahini base. I love that. So then I'll put on, last night we had, let's see, some enchiladas. So I'll use some enchiladas with some tomatillo sauce and I'll stick that all together in a big bowl and just and eat a huge meal. <laughs> okay, are there any snacks throughout the day or are you, do you very regimented? Do you have breakfast, lunch, and dinner and that's it? It completely depends on the day. Like okay. sometimes I'm not even hungry first thing in the morning and I wait till I get hungry or I wait till right after my workout I get really hungry. So that's usually 10, 30, 11. Uh, so then I'll have one big meal and then I usually have like a big dinner. So not really snacker kind of a person. Okay. If I'm traveling I'll end up eating a little bit more snacky type of things. Okay. And let's I always have my Happy Cow app to tell me where to go find food I have to say. Very cool. Yes, cool. Love, you love it. And then for dinner, what do you have for dinner on a typical day? A lot of Mexican food, a lot of Japanese food. I love, again, like I love the vegetables. So I'll do a lot of roasted vegetables and bean dishes, lots of lentil dishes. I love Indian cuisine. I love veggie sushi. Uh, just, just totally any kind of combination of herbs, spices, vegetables, grains, a little mm -hmm. bit of nuts, a little bit of seeds, you know, something really hearty and ethnic flair, a lot of flavor. I like flavor. You have kids and do you raise them vegan or do you not? Well, good question. I am in a mixed marriage. My husband is vegetarian and I'm vegan. Oh. <laughs> so it's a challenge. This is like a daily challenge. We had a big argument last night because there was ice cream in my house last night that he gave to my kids. So it is, it's challenging enough to raise kids in this society where they're constantly bombarded with junk food like all the time junk food and I don't want to give them a sugar and all that garbage but I also don't want them to have any animal products for you know philosophical reasons obviously so it is very challenging but you know I pack their lunches every single day I'm always providing healthy snacks I don't let that stuff in the house that's why we had an argument last night yeah. <laughs> we won't get into that but um, it's just it's a matter of balancing and you know, they are vegetarian. They they are, you know, they, I think, they're so young now, but I think they have absolutely have adopted that philosophy of not eating animal products, except for with my husband who eats the dairy and the eggs. They're like, oh, well, daddy can eat it. So it's a constant interesting um, dynamic. But I, you know, I just make sure that I always have healthy foods for them. And I'm always, you know, making sure that we prepare for birthday parties and school events. All their teachers know that they don't eat animal products. So they have, we have alternatives for when there's birthday parties and all that. 
What does your husband have difficulty giving up? Ice cream is one of them, obviously, but cheese or what are some of the other things that he has difficulty giving up that are not vegan? Yeah, he goes out and he'll have, you know, dairy products and he doesn't, I don't have them in the house. I don't cook with them, but when he goes out, he does order that stuff. What about like So Delicious brand soy ice creams? And I know. I, has he tried those? Yes, and yes. He, won't, he doesn't go for them. I'll have you talk to him. Yeah. Wow, those no. are so delicious. I know, they're so fabulous. Yeah. I love those. Pro I think there's so many great products. And when I take him to these, you know, these so many great vegan restaurants yeah. now, I went to Crossroads the other night it was unbelievable and uh you know those they have such great when he goes out there he's like I could eat like this but um I just I guess I don't cook as you know like the way he would want me to because I cook really healthy too and I don't know I I'm it's 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 a maybe we'll know. have to hook you up with Tal yeah with Tal yeah. Ronan the <laughs> owner of Crossroads right yeah oh, he was amazing yeah, yeah he's a really great chef yes amazing I was blown away cool. but there are some great options out there and I don't know. You know, you can lead a horse to water, but, you know, you can't make him drink. Yeah. So I'm working on him. Okay, great. <laughs> Work in progress. Great. As far as uh, omega-3s and DHA um, minerals, um, there are certain things I, I read constantly about vegans and many people in our society being deficient in. Um, can you talk a little bit about omega-3s and DHA? Yeah, it's really complicated from a biochemical standpoint because we consume you know, the, the bigger version of it, and we, I mean the smaller version of it, and we have to kind of do something in our body to convert it. So we go from, as vegans, we consume it from alpha linolenic acid, and that has to convert to EPA and DHA. Now there's come some controversy about whether or not we can convert enough to DHA and EPA that we need, because those are the, the essential oils that are essential fats that we require. So people, that's where the whole fish oil argument comes in. But, you know, you could also get it from a microalgae formula if you're deficient. Mm -hmm. You know, we don't even have a really good way of testing for deficiency at this point. But if you make sure you're getting enough of the ALA, which you can get from seeds, you know, especially flax seeds, hemp seeds, chia seeds. Mm -hmm. You could also get it from soy products. You could also get it from walnuts are a great source of ALA. If you're getting, you're making sure you're getting a dose of that every day, like a tablespoon of the seeds or a quarter cup of the walnuts, and you're lowering your omega-6 fatty acids from the processed foods and a lot of vegetable oils, mm -hmm. if you kind of can, you know, get your, it's a real complicated, yeah. I don't want to get crazy into it, but if you can balance out your ratio a little bit better, then you will have, you will make sure your body will convert enough into DHA, most likely. Mm -hmm. Of course, it's something to be mindful of, who knows what will come out in the future, but as of now, it doesn't seem like we have DHA deficiency. Mm -hmm. I make a smoothie each morning with spirulina, maca, chlorella, hemp uh, powder, uh -huh. bananas, and an avocado. Ooh. How do you feel about that? What am I, what am I lacking? Uh, I don't know. Some the leafy greens are always my favorite, but I guess you're getting it from the spirulina. Yes. That sounds like a great smoothie to me. Okay, cool. Yeah. And as far as bodybuilding, I'm looking to get a little bit bigger. You know, I've been a vegan for a long time, and it shows. I have no belly, and uh -huh. I'm very lean. Bulking up with vegan uh, food, what would you recommend for someone who's looking to bulk up a little bit and weight lift? Well, you bulk up with the weights, with lifting heavier weights. And I think that if you exercise more, you know, you're doing more of the lifting and you're compensating by eating adequate calories, you're going to build up your muscle. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's just that simple. You really, the muscle comes in from the gym. Okay. I've talked to personal trainers who are vegan personal trainers who have said, you know, I can't eat a lot of tofu. I guess it's got a lot of estrogens. It's making me flabby. And I talked to one guy who said that he's um, using a, or eating a lot of avocados while he works out to really bulk up. How, do you know anything about that? I mean, there's a lot of calories. You're getting a nice source of calories. So, you know, if you eat enough calories, you're going to provide the nourishment to the muscles to build up mm -hmm. once you're once you're stimulating them by resistance training. Mm -hmm. So if you're pushing more weight, your body's going to require more, you know, calories, more energy to repair mm -hmm. and to, to build up those muscles. So it's just a matter of lifting heavier, you know, safely, and then and compensating with healthy food. Are there any particular foods you would recommend for those who are looking to lose weight, vegans who are looking to lose weight? With weight loss, I do recommend cutting out oils and because oils are just a concentrated source of calories and fat and they don't do anything for satiety. And I recommend eating a lot of fiber, which is really easy to do on a vegan diet. And the other thing I, that I think really helps a lot of people is letting go of that myth of, I need to have three meals and two snacks or four meals and one snack. Like it's always changing. That's because your body knows. So people tend to, you know, if they're eating too much, they're going to gain weight. So if you want to drop down weight, I recommend eating a little less, you know, maybe stopping eating earlier at night so that that your body has time to get hungry and repair and rejuvenate. So it's really a matter of tuning into your own body signals and eating just when you're hungry and what not filling up too much. And what about foods for better skin? Everyone wants better skin, yeah. especially in Los Angeles. 
That's true. Well, the carotenoid-rich foods are great for bringing on that glow, you know, so you want to eat a lot of leafy greens and the stuff that are reds, oranges, and yellows, you know, mangoes, peppers, uh, watermelon, anything that has a red, orange, or yellow color is a mm -hmm. great way to boost your natural glow. Mm -hmm. I've been a vegan for, I think, 21 years now, wow. and uh, Eric here has been a vegan for about 25 years. Wow. So we've been around the block, and uh, in terms of something that you could teach perhaps someone like myself or Eric about diet, perhaps something that you learned about the vegan diet that's a little more advanced that maybe surprised you in the last couple of years, can you come up with anything? That's that's a that's a hard question because you guys have been doing it for so long. I think I think the one thing that might be a little unique is that to really listen to your body and to to not force yourself to eat when you're not hungry, to not, you know, I think those are like the the most most people kind of let go of that um, and just kind of like try to fit into the regimen and eat when they're supposed to and what they're supposed to. And I think variety is the most important thing that anyone could consider because it's very easy to get stuck in a rut and mm -hmm. eat the same things every day. Mm -hmm. And it's important to, to make sure you're getting a wide variety to make sure you're getting all of your nutrients. I'm sure you're taking your B12. Yes. Yes. And that's not new. Let's actually talk a little bit about B12. How do you feel about B12? Supplementation uh, as far as foods that have B12. What are your thoughts on B12? It's a really important question, and a lot of vegans are being found to be deficient in vitamin B12. So I think everyone needs to be, you know, mind, I always say mind your B12 and make sure you are supplementing the foods that really contain it, you know, like nutritional yeast or the um, fortified plant-based milks are not reliable sources of B12 because you need to make sure you're getting enough. So I, I really do recommend people just take the supplement, make sure you're getting at least 2,000 micrograms a week. Mm -hmm. And I think everyone needs to be adamant about it because your body can compensate in the lab work and you may not see the deficiency until you have irreversible neurological damage yeah. and it's not worth it, I don't think. So what if I what if I were not to supplement every week? What if I supplemented every once a year and got a shot of B12? How does it work as far as the recycling within the body? You know, you're putting yourself at risk by doing it once a year. I think, I don't know what the, it would depend on the dosage, mm -hmm. and I don't know how well you would maintain it and why why risk it, yeah. you know, when you could just literally pop one supplement a week. Mm -hmm. it's, to me, it's not worth the risk. So B12 deficiency in vegans and vegetarians versus meat eaters. Uh, do we see more B12 deficiency in vegans? Yes, we do. And that's because a lot of people say, oh, I get it. It's natural. You know, if this is the most natural, perfect diet, then I'm going to get all my B12. But it's not true. Mm -hmm. You cannot get it from plant sources and you cannot get adequate amounts from plant sources, even if you're thinking about it, but, you know, not adamant. So I think that it is, it's a little too risky. And I think that we really need to make sure that we're getting it and be be, because you know we need to be responsible as vegans because we want to represent the mm -hmm. vegan diet and show people that you can be really healthy and you sure. can not only thrive but you know be you know better than you would be if you weren't eating a whole food plant-based mm -hmm. diet so I think that's one factor that you can just get out of the make not make an issue the latest research I went to the International um, Vegetarian Congress this mm -hmm. year happens only every five years I think they said it's about like almost 50% or even more I don't remember the number of, of vitamin B, B12 deficiency in vegans what? so people are getting Getting deficient even yeah. though we think we, we can bypass that and, yes, yeah yes. with the perfect diet and what about vitamin D uh, do you find a lot of people are deficient in that and what are the vitamins that you feel vegans and vegetarians are most deficient in perhaps vegans and then vegetarians okay good question vitamin D has now become kind of a worldwide epidemic of deficiency it's Nobody honestly knows why because there's so many variables. Mm -hmm. You know, we have excess weight. We're all, you know, two out of three of us have overweight or obesity. So that prevents the D from penetrating from the sun and mm -hmm. cre creating vitamin D in your body. You know, what we're eating, our, our lack of being out in the sun. But across the board, you shouldn't be getting your vitamin D from food anyway because where do you find vitamin D from food for omnivores? You know, liver, mm -hmm. egg yolk, stuff you shouldn't be eating anyway. Mm -hmm. So I think that's one of the reasons we're seeing a lot of vitamin D deficiency. And I I recommend everyone get tested for it, mm -hmm. which has become kind of standard protocol for a lot of mm -hmm. physicians. They're just that's part of what they test for now. And mm -hmm. if they don't, just make sure you ask for it. Mm -hmm. If you're deficient, you know, try the sun therapy. You know, but a lot of people, even here in Southern California, we're at a good latitude, lots of sunshine. Normally, not today, not this morning yet. And someone like myself who's wearing sunblock, I forgot to take this stuff off, and I'm probably not getting much sun right now. No, you're not getting much sun right now. Yeah. And exactly, we, we wear a lot of sunblock because we're sun phobic. There's so many variables that come into play why we, we have so much D deficiency. Mm -hmm. So I think everyone needs to get tested first. Try sun therapy. Go out in the sun between 10 and 2 and get some exposure. Let your arms and legs be without sunscreen and just try to soak it in. Mm -hmm. And if it doesn't you know, escalate to the number that you need it to, then consider supplementation because you don't want to be D deficient. Mm -hmm. How do you feel about the McDougal diet? 
Uh, I think it's a it's a great diet. A lot of people have a lot of success with it, you know, but we do need to be concerned about certain nutrients. You know, Dr. McDougall says just to eat starch and everything's fine, but we do need to make sure we're getting enough of everything. Like we don't want to become deficient. We want to be role model vegans. If we're trying to perpetuate the vegan movement, which I am, and I'm sure you are, I know mm -hmm. you probably are as well, we need to mind all of the nutrients. And people are seeing deficiencies in iodine and protein. I have never seen a protein deficiency, but we just want to make sure that that doesn't happen. Mm -hmm. So I think the McDougal diet's great as long as you make sure you're getting everything that you need. You're taking your B12 supplement, you're testing for vitamin D deficiency, and you're staying on top of getting a wide variety of different foods. Mm -hmm. And as far as just the raw food diet, how do you feel about that? Raw food diet can be excellent. I think it's hard for a lot of people to stick with because it's very limited. Mm -hmm. And some people don't do well on the raw food diet because it's A, restrictive, mm -hmm. and B, a lot of people consume a lot of oils, a lot of heavy foods that is not healthy either, and they end up with a very high fat diet. And you might be lacking in certain things. Like some people do better eating cooked grains and cooked legumes. They, they thrive better with that. Mm -hmm. It opens up your options. But if you're eating at least half of your diet from raw foods or maybe even three quarters of your diet, you're doing really well. And you're, it's a great way to get a lot of those nutrients that you can't, that kind of you know, get destroyed with cooking. Mm -hmm. I think raw foods are fabulous as long as you make sure you're getting a nice variety. And if you if you feel limited, then don't feel like you have to be 100% because you don't have to be perfectly 100% raw to thrive from raw foods. Mm -hmm. So there are plenty of vegetarians as well that go to Happy Cow and use Happy Cow as a resource, as well as people that aren't vegetarian or vegan. What advice would you give to those who are eating meat and eating fish to move over to the vegan way? Well, what's so exciting is that if you just start thinking about it and start trying healthy vegan foods, you know, just have like a meatless Monday or even a meatless meal. When people start incorporating more meatless meals and meatless days, they notice the difference that they feel like their energy increases. You know, there's just there's no argument that eating whole plant foods helps everyone. Like everyone gets better when they eat more of those foods. Nobody can argue with that. Mm -hmm. And once people start to feel that and notice the changes, it's like this wonderful self-perpetuating forward momentum and people just start going, oh, I'll just have a meatless week and maybe yeah. a meatless month. And then it just kind of like automatically, you know, flows from there. When they realize how delicious the food can be, I think people get pleasantly surprised. Mm -hmm. And I think you just have to introduce all those different plant-based foods and just try plant-based meals that are so delicious that your app mm -hmm. so wonderfully, you know, helps people find and once you find that you could eat that way and enjoy it, I think that also helps perpetuate it. Okay. So you're on a cable show. It's also online or is it not online? The show itself is not online. It's on Varia Living on the network, on the cable network. Okay. And it, they ha we've done some webisodes and they have some clips on the website, but not specifically. It's not the whole episodes are not online. And there's a Varia app as well. You can't yes. watch it from the app, can you? Yes. You can. can. Oh, yes, cool. there's an app called Varia Living Go. And it's an app where you can watch live Varia. But you, you can't watch it. If you miss it, you can't watch it later. So it's oh. only like watching the show, the network live. Okay. Cool. Yeah, cool. and it's it's like two ninety nine a month after the first like month or three months is free, and then you have to pay like two ninety nine a month. But you can watch all their wonderful programming. And how can those watching this video find more about you, as well as your speaking schedule, as well as any books you might have coming up, as far as any television shows and appearances you might have coming up? Well, my website, plantbaseddietitian.com, has you know kind of follows everything. I put most of the stuff I'm that are out, mm -hmm. and of course I'm on Facebook and Twitter like a crazy person. I'm obsessed with social media so plant-based dietitian if you find me on on Facebook on Twitter and I'm always posting about where I'm gonna be and what I'm doing and mm -hmm. and nutrition facts and recipes and stuff like that and we'll put those addresses below and uh, I just want to thank you very much Juliana for your time thank you, and uh, really appreciate work. it really thank you very much okay. okay fantastic thank you bye bye <laughs>